to round six of the IOC 2012. We're back on mainland Europe at the first tarmac of northwest Belgium, to be exact. Nearly 300 competitive kilometers over 18 special stages. It's the famous Ypres Rally. Yeah, it's characterized by long straights, tight corners. The rally hits the farmland surrounding the historic Ypres and spreads briefly across the border into France for day two. Flat out asphalt assault guaranteed and indeed demanded. Well, we arrive in Ypres with a uh, heavy heart. The tragic death of Gareth Roberts still fresh in our minds. Just 24 years of age, the co-driver of Craig Brien, killed in an accident on last week's Targo Florio. And the talented young Welshman, remembered here by all competitors, with a ceremony before the rally and uh, tribute stickers on every single car. If rallying is anything, it's a family. And we feel like we've lost one of them. Well, remembrance is ever present here at Ypres, near the service park. The Menon Gate stands as a memorial to the fallen in the First World War. Andreas Mikkelsen comes here as the leader in the driver's standings. Yes, Kabetsky, nearest man to him, just six points adrift. Hannanen currently languishing by his own standards in third place. Skoda, yes, uh, well and truly on top of Persia for the time being. 209 points as against 124. Shakedown, done and dusted. Rude awakening for some. Others getting a bit sensible. Reigning champion and current championship leader, Norway's Andreas Mikkelsen. Turns 23 on day one of the rally. Yes, will his birthday presents be his first ever victory on tarmac? We'll see. First of all, I need to drive uh, exceptionally fast. Uh, for sure, Freddy Loix and Yoho will be very, very, very quick. Uh, but I have to make no mistakes, no punctures. and. I've done it, uh, yeah, two years, and uh, I had a lot of punctures over those two years. So if I can keep the, the car in the in the correct line all the time, without hitting the rocks, I think that's the that's the, the option for success on this rally. Jo Helen, the 2010 IOC champion, currently third in the championship, uh, thanks to a win and a second place on the only two events that he's contested so far this season. So his uh, hit record is pretty good. Uh, yes, Helen. Uh, Yes, has his own challenges here in Belgium. Honestly, it's not my top favorite rally. I, I don't have so nice memories from here. Last time it ended up to the ditch and so, but what is positive thing, the thing, it cannot be much worse than what it has been in the past these years. Seven-time Chico Eat Rally winner is back. The Intercontinental Rally Challenge is here for Freddy Loikson. He's here for everybody. Racing a Peugeot 207 S2000. That's yeah, the one he's used to racing. Yeah, we know that we have uh, two very good uh, drivers in Skoda, three, two very good cars, and uh, it's nice to see one, ti one time over here in Iper uh, where will be the Peugeot on level. We'll see. What about Peter Schoen? Mr. Belgian is on uh, Fabia. Yes, winner in Iper 2001, six time Belgian rally champion. Kind of be him, between him and Loix, if you ask anybody. He's used to driving a WRC car. Will he adapt? It's a very tough rally. Uh, I'm, I'm quite experienced here. Uh, I won the rally once, so I know uh, every corner uh, for sure. That's an uh, advantage. But, uh, you know, uh, Freddy knows uh, the stages also very well. And I just miss the, the, the knowledge of the car to just find the ultimate, uh, what is needed to, to beat those guys. So we will try to, to be the best of the rest, I think, and if something happens in front, perhaps we can take a podium. So, Sean, not a shoe, you might say. Six stages, 
two being contested on day one. Nearly 90 kilometres of competition. Weather forecast, well, dodgy, as you know. Uh, suggesting 40% chance of rain. Yes. Weather uncertain then on the opening day of the rally. The drivers leaving the city centre of Ypres. And, of course, the Grotta Market. It's nicer than the name suggests. Fans out in force, the biggest roar, of course, for um, Freddie Loikes. Yes. And so, the rally underway. Stage one, merging of the classic uh, Dickibus and the Vestalter. Yeah, smooth, fast, technical, winding, and with that uh, famous jump in the mix. You are Hannon then, and together. First on the road. Yes, uh, mixed tyres, he said. Uh, second quickest he was, I've got to tell you as well, on the opener. Uh, said that water and mud on the road didn't make life easy, uh, as you've already heard. It's not his uh, favourite rally. And, uh, yes, he's had his troubles here before. Said he was having trouble finding a good rhythm as well. And uh, was not best pleased by his own performance. Very high standards. Andreas Mikkelsen, equally so, second on the road. But... Uh, by the end of this run, 0.8 seconds quicker than Hanna. Said he was uh, not making any big attacking moves out there. Uh, was having a lot of fun. Went through OK without too many problems. Can't ask for more than that, really. Freddie Loikes, listen to that roar, underway. A man who knows how to win here and knows how to win well. Third on the road, uh, third quickest though. On wet tyres. And as you can see, reasonably dry. 1.2 seconds behind Mickelson. Would local knowledge be uh, paying dividends a little bit later? Said it wasn't too bad, but um, a decent start. Lots of bumps along the way he complained about. Freddie, it's where you know. You're not supposed to complain. Uh, what about Peter Schoen? Fourth on the road and fourth quickest as well. Said he made a lot of mistakes out there. The main issue was actually gear selection. Um, yeah, still sort of driving with his WRC mind, you might say. Said he found it very difficult to adjust and uh, still settling in. Well, if he's settling in and went fourth quickest, he's not doing too bad. Patrick Flirty, fifth on the road, and uh, matching that number, fifth quickest as well here on the opener, but uh, significantly 11.2 seconds behind Mickelson, so quite a gap. Set the stage was OK, car OK as well. He's in an OK kind of mood, but just not quick enough. Big, fluffy Magritian sky. As uh, Florian Gonon decided to go for it. Yes, yeah, big drama for him, though, I'm afraid. Not the start he wanted, I think you might say. Well, rolling his own oats. Yes, span and roll just 300 metres after the start of the stage. Crew OK, thankfully. Uh, the oat field, well, compressed. So, vest down to 7.39 kilometres, uh, just after 5.30 local time. Still bright and, uh, as you can probably hear on the mics, breezy as well. No time to rest, straight to stage two. Uh, short stage this one. Historically, it was begun a bit of a tricky one, run the opposite direction. Technical to begin with, very fast, open. Uh, conditions cool and windy, but no rain, and the stage actually drying, as you can see, and Hannon was quick. First on the road, pushing very hard. Uh, did have an off-road moment. Lost time in a ditch. Uh, it was a fifth gear moment as well. Check this. Well, with Mickelson, uh, yes, Hallenstein, 4.20.7, uh, quickest on the stage. Mickelson also having a go, as you can see. Um, cut too much. The tyres, that is, not his route through. Said he was just uh, taking things easy, a no-risk approach. Only one spare on board the car, perhaps that's why. And uh, as a result, lost 
top spot overall, four seconds slower than Helena. Oh, Freddie Lloyd's really wanting another win here. Tested thoroughly in preparation. Uh, knows the Skodas are very strong. A lot of mud out there, dragged on by uh, previous cars just doing the cutting. Especially Hanneman. Said it was very, very slippery. And for Lloyd's to say that, it must have been. Uh, drying, though, as we've said. His time, 4.25.4, third on the stage. Patrick Floden. Well, his first IRC appearance of the year. Missed the uh, tour of Corsica after breaking his collarbone in training. Uh, driving a car run by former WRC champion Petter Solberg. His team, I should say. Very slippery, muddy, water on the windscreen. Uh, can't see it right now, but there was. A uh, couple of little ditches holding water. Robert Barrable. Young Irish star, finished ninth in Eve in 2011. Quickest on Thursday. Uh, overshot, mistake. Had to go into reverse and uh, lost a lot of time as a result. Was eighth after stage one, but uh, yes, his time 4.41.1 and uh, yeah, didn't like that. Tyres too soft, he said. Barrel incidentally, quickest on Thursday. Shakedown test, so uh, can go quickly. Hannon then leading by 3.2. Two seconds, Mickelson, nearest man to him, with Fred Lux in the frame, as you would expect. Well, we'll be back in uh, just over a minute with the remaining stages of day one of the 2012 IRC Rally. Stay with us. Welcome back to Eve. Now the crew's heading southeast for the first passage through the Mason Sauvegarde, with only a gravel section, the only one indeed of this rally. Yes, to be contested. Hannon, well, maybe you'll like a little bit of this one then. Quickest time, certainly did, and uh, holding on to first overall. Uh, indeed, 9.1 seconds was his margin by the end of this one. Said he felt okay, uh, no mistakes, and uh, liked the fact that the road was just a little bit clearer. Uh, was able to push more than he had been in stages one and two, and uh, everybody taking notice, including Andreas Mickelson, 5.9 seconds behind hand on this one. Uh, showing some maturity, however, second overall, said a good run through his first loop. Too much cut to the tyres, but uh, taking another approach than last year. Um, said he could possibly push a little bit more, but, well, recognising that it's a long rally and just didn't want to bid it before he's winning it. Got my tenses mixed up. You want tension? Well, what you have to look for is Freddie Lawrence. Yeah, 7.2 seconds slower than Hannah. Third overall. Yes. Freddie never likes being a chaser. 12.3 seconds behind Hanlon overall. Said it went OK, but uh, very surprised to lose so much time to Hanlon. In other words, Freddie felt like he was up there towards the max and couldn't really understand the clock. Peter Schoen. Well, just how is he settling into this RC machine? Fifth quickest is the answer. Yes, uh, 0.4 seconds slower than uh, fourth Flodel. But uh, as you saw, made a mistake at the start. Uh, gear selection issues he'd been really struggling with. It seems that he just well, can't get the hang of it, at least for the time being. Remaining fourth overall, 14.5 seconds behind third place. So that's the gap. Chris Prinson, also Belgium, and again RS, fourth or third on the road uh, in the two-wheel drive category. 2005 Eep winner, struggling a bit in the early part of the rally. Yeah, sitting behind Arzenzo and Derechalk in the two-wheel drive category. 14th overall after three stages. Well, the Honda Civic Type R, great battle between Princeton in the, the uh, with Princeton, I should say, the two-wheel drive category. 1.2 seconds behind Princeton overall, 17th in the GC for Martin Kangur of Estonia. Well, setting sunshine. 
Just after 10 past seven local time. And the service area beckons. Service B, actually. After the first three stages, the cars returning to the park in the centre. Very busy with fans. Very keen to get a look at the rally leader. I was pushing quite a lot of fun. Um, but the last one was good. No clean run, no any... You know, at the moment it was much more clean at the whole stage, so I hope that it's like that in, in, in the evening. It won't be. Well, as the team worked on uh, his muddy but undamaged Skoda. Time for uh, an explanation of that big moment experienced on stage two. I came downhill quite 6k and then right hand corner. I saw that they so I remember from the record that there's some small space on the left hand if I go wide and I used I used to even a little bit more what I was in the plan before the corner but I didn't lose so much time just a little bit struggling with the mud but uh, it came back to the road and no, no any damage for the car. Dickibus. Yes, second run through of stage four, 14.3 kilometers in total and uh, eight local time. Shadow's getting longer. It must have felt like a long day as well. Hannan, third quickest time in uh, four stages. So yeah, he's just hoovering up the stage wins. Leading by 11.6 seconds and 16 seconds quicker than the first loop. He's getting used to this. And he just started to like it as well. Said the stage was uh, much better now. Went extra cautious on the muddy sections, but then just absolutely opened it up on the drier parts. Allen in superb form. Andreas Mickelson, well, he went second quickest, 2.5 seconds behind Hanlon. Uh, remained solidly in second place overall, nine seconds quicker. Uh, he went on this one than the first time by. Said, Good tyre choice this time. <laughs> Happy with his driving, driving with his head, and taking some shortcuts, as you can see. He's not averse to using the scenery here to his own advantage. Mickelson becoming a wider young fox, perhaps. That may be just waiting for Ewell Hannan to make a mistake. Who knows? In the chase, Freddie Lloyd's third quickest, and as you can see, it's a busy old place in his office. 4.8 seconds behind Hannon, second, or in the overall, I should say, now 17.1 seconds behind Hannon, and 5.5 behind second place Mickelson, so solidly in third, Freddie. Said he spanned after the end of the stage, uh, no problem for the driver, the coke, or indeed the car, but uh, maybe lucky. Yes, if you're going to have ill fortune, let it be after you've clocked out, as it were. Peter Shaw, fourth quickest, remains fourth overall behind the big guys. Shaw saying the stage was uh, OK, no mistakes. But uh, unfortunately for him, he said, the guys in front of me, well, they're flying. Clear for takeoff. Uh, Michael Solovov of Poland, six quickest behind Floden. Uh, no mistakes. None since the beginning of the uh, rally, indeed, for the Polish driver. Six overall. Solid performance by him in his Peugeot 207. 17.5 seconds behind the fifth place at Floden. Floden in fifth spot, as you can see. Yeah, Solovov saying they uh, had a good stage but couldn't go faster. And indeed, uh, if they could, they would, all of these guys. So, Hannon out there in front and uh, looking very good. Stay with us for the uh, last two stages of day one in Eve as the sun sets. Back in the moment. So then back to Mason Sovergaard, 15.08 kilometres to be dealt with, and that only gravel section of the rally. Uh, first on the road, Johanan, before the rally, said he hoped the event would be dry and, uh, his own words, boring. I think he means uh, without too much drama, his end. Well, clean run, nice pace, no dramas, 
uh, still pushing and taking some big risks along the way and some big cuts. His time was uh, 8.11.7, seven seconds quicker than his first passage through there. Mickelson, <laughs> well, oh dear. Pushing to uh, challenge Yuho. Um, yeah, it's the first time he kind of um, decided to come out of the library, if you like, and go mountaineering. Uh, stuck in a ditch, unfortunately, uh, with his new dramatic lifestyle. Uh, spectators helping him out, losing, well, over a minute, I'm afraid. Uh, 9.12.7, dropping him to fifth overall, but he uh, got back on the stage in front of Loik's. Hmm. Sadly, he rejoined, as you can see, kicking up an absolute firestorm out there. Dry it was, but as a result, there was plenty of dust being caught by the setting sun. And poor old Freddie Loikes had to back out. Yeah. Very frustrating, he said. Lost time. 8.19.4, nine seconds slower than Hannon, but five seconds quicker than his own first passage through. But Freddie may have not been saying too much at that point, but believe me, there's a lot going on in his head, and he wasn't a happy bunny by the end. Peter Sherwin pushing hard. Car set up just too high. Definitely needed a lower car, probably to get out of the sunshine at this time of day. Yes, his time, 8.24 flat. Moves up to third overall, thanks to uh, Mickelson's off. One minute gap to Floden behind, though. Andreas Anya in the production cup. Subaru Impreza had brake problems before, but they were fixed at service and now just getting better and better. Yes, uh, time 8.44.4. Production class leader, 10th overall. Service crew changed the gearbox of uh, Jesper van der Heuvel, the Dutchman in the Mitsubishi Lancer. Yeah, did that in the 29 minute service. Amazing. And now pushing hard, very quick, excellent time, 8.32.4, 12 seconds quicker, quicker than Anya and taking the class stage, but uh, still fifth in that group. And Cedric Decheco in his Mitsubishi as well. Time, 8.46.6, third quickest on the stage uh, in class, still second place behind Anya. Langemark, 18.84 kilometres, 21.25 local time, I beg you. Yes, 18.84 kilometres in length. There's your map. Like a patchwork of green and brown. Lots of crops in this part of the world. Uh, lots of wind, too. And as you can see from the uh, kind of, looks like mist, doesn't it? But it's kicked up dust. Yeah, it was a dry old day, surprising. The crews heading north of Ypres for the uh, final test of the day. Patrick Floden, seventh quickest. Fifth overall at the end of day one as the sun just started to disappear. Absolutely blazing in the eyes of the drivers. 15 seconds behind, fourth place overall. Made a mistake, that missed junction. Said, um, eh, just see what he could do on day two, Floden. Peter Schoen. Fourth quickest uh, and in third place overall. A minute behind the rally leader. So just getting better and better. Still problems with gear selection though. And um, just doesn't know when that's likely to change. As for Freddie Loik's third quickest, just 0 0.6 behind the uh, second quickest time. 26.6 behind the rally leader at the end of day one. Said he just had to push harder. Skodas are quick. And uh, well, he in his 207 Peugeot, not that far away. While well, you ask questions of yourself, Andreas Mickelson did earlier on and uh, well, got found out. One point second, though, second quickest on this one. 1.4 uh, behind the quickest time out there. Moving back to fourth overall, it's but 13.4 seconds behind Schoen's third place. It seems his early strategy should have been stuck with. Yes, he should have stayed uh, quiet, if you like. Nothing finished just yet. Still 12 stages to go, let's not forget. We lost a minute and I will do all I can to try to catch the time uh, back. Okay, not to you, but uh, to climb the leaderboard as much as I can. Johannan, fifth quickest time in six stages. Don't forget, that's a fifth win it should be in six stages. Wow. Yeah, leading at the end of day one, 26.8 seconds ahead of Freddie Lloyds. That's a huge margin. A very good first day for the Finn then. So. What's the plan for tomorrow? 
simple, he says. Uh, stay in the road, yeah. <laughs> Easy, eh? Uh, so, a uh, service seat, just around about uh, three minutes to ten. It's nice that they are indeed having some kind of solstice time. Late nights with some sunshine still out there. Final service then, finishing of day two. And indeed the setting of positions drive, overall. We are a little bit on the limit uh, of our uh, possibilities, on the limit of, uh, of the car. We didn't make any mistakes and uh, there was one, one stage, stage five, where we lost a lot of time on... Uh, on Hanninen, uh, because uh, Mikkelsen, he went off, just came back in front of me uh, on the road and we had to slow down a little bit uh, because of the dust, but otherwise I'm quite happy with my speed. Yeah, you, you kind of hope you'll give him some seconds back, wouldn't you? 26.8 uh, is what he's giving away at the moment to Hanninen. Hanninen then has a cushion going into the second day, but don't forget it's 12 stages still remaining here at Deep. And that, well, it will be a fascinating affair and hope you can uh, come back to us and find out how that goes tomorrow. Don't forget, ircseries.com. There's apps available as well. You'll be guided as to where you can find those. I'm Carlton Kirby. We'll see you tomorrow.